Margaret, you're the head of an original, first of its kind venture, which helps businesses here in the U.S. connect with Chinese businesses, while helping Chinese businesses and individuals connect with opportunities here in the U.S. And even though your background had nothing to do with that, mm-hmm. you're getting your company, your business, to grow really fast. If you could define that journey with one word, what word would that be? Uh, I think it's challenging, but surprise. Uh, it's like if you do something, follow your heart, you will meet a lot of challenges on the way. But if you never give up, you will find a lot of surprise at the end of it. Born in the south of China to a family of a successful metallurgical industry, Margaret Jingjie Yang learned the importance of what her family did early on and decided to study electrical engineering as an undergrad. In 2011, she got her master's in the same area from Syracuse University and afterwards moved down to the city to attend Columbia University. There, she got a master's of math and statistics. While studying at Columbia, Margaret works as a correspondent for a Chinese network and realized she wanted to continue to provide cross-cultural services between America and China. So a married China was born. Margaret, yeah. your background mm-hmm. was in electrical engineering and then you went on to study that in your graduate school, then you studied statistics at Columbia. Yeah. When did you realize, when did the bell ring to you that it was time for you to do something completely different, that you wanted to do something completely different? How did it happen? Yeah. So, uh, I think it's because of um, my uh, like internship experience in New York City. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, even though I was a statistics student in Columbia University, uh, but when I was in school, I, I worked as a journalist uh, for internship in China Business News. So based on that experience, I get a lot of chance to talk to different people. Uh, so these people, uh, I have connections more and more. And some people, they begin to request me to help them to make some connections between US and China. Or like the, uh, the Chinese businessmen, they want to uh, do some events or some kind of visiting program in US. Then I'm helping them. Uh, I help them to do this. So then I just find um, I can open a company for folks on this kind of business. How did the whole thing come to your mind first? What did you put down on paper? How did you first start brainstorming and conceptualizing, bringing it to life, you know? At the beginning, uh, I was had a full-time job mm-hmm. and work, work for a, a luxury magazine for lifestyle. Yeah. Uh, but um, when I find this uh, business opportunities, um, I just do this company as a part-time business. Uh, but until the 2013 August and the fashion week will be happening in one, one month later in September and my uh, one of my friend and she asked me to help her to find sponsors for a famous designers uh, fashion show uh, in New York Fashion Week then I tried and I did get a sponsor for her and that time I have some invitations and tickets for for the fashion show then uh, I got a, I got an idea and I can have some uh, Chinese high-end visitors to come here to watch a show and give them a really good entertainment a series of events for them so that's how the high-end travel business idea come up with then since from that time uh, I find uh, I was too busy to continue my old job. So I just quit the job and start uh, my own business. Yeah. AmeriChina gives a hand to American businesses and individuals that are establishing or expanding their brands in China, while also helping their Chinese counterparts with US opportunities. It was established just last September, and it's quickly growing as Margaret makes constant innovations to meet her customers' needs and wants. We don't need to uh, 
uh, put a lot of money before start the business mm -hmm. uh, because uh, it's like a travel program or it's a public relations uh, events. So you usually we have this resource or service and uh, the client will pay us first, mm -hmm. then we get the fund and we, we will continue to use their funding to do the uh, later steps. So we don't need a, a big capital to start the business. But in another way, uh, I think for a public relations or a luxury lifestyle business, um, uh, one of the important cost is uh, you should spend some money to keep your lifestyle. When I just start uh, cooperate with the uh, like a high quality brand like Burberry, uh -huh. uh, like Max Myra, Dolce Gabbana, and I used it to be a VIP client for them. <laughs> so that's interesting, yeah. So mo most of our cost at the beginning uh, is the money I spent personally uh -huh. <laughs> to this high end consumption company. Your business now, as you're talking about, has many different facets. It has a focus on PR, on international luxury travel, event planning. It has many different focuses. Yeah. If you were to describe or to tell me which area is the most lucrative area or which area is your main focus, what okay. would it be? So I think Currently, our focus will be uh, will be on the uh, China mainland customers or clients. Mm -hmm. So uh, the first is uh, our high-end travel program, which is open to uh, the Chinese mainland customers. And the second will be uh, our public relations or communication event planning service uh, for the Chinese mainland companies and who want to do have some publicity here in New York.